ہلو السلام علیکم طلاب طالبات تی ایم ای احتاش السلام علیکم کین یو ہیر می صوت واضح ہے اندر کو Can you see the screen? Ashasha, well there. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today, inshallah, we'll talk about block 3, part 1, Network Technologies. We are starting with new block, that is block 3. Okay. In our last meeting, uh, we discussed about the ICT systems. So we stopped their uh, meeting number seven about uh, how we convert the analog world into the digital world and how we can convert the things and the analog world into the digital world. Okay. Okay, you don't hear me. How about other students? Other students, can you hear me? Tarek. Muhammad Tarek. Can you hear me? Muhammad Tarek, please check from your side. Rahman Ahmad Mabrook. Yes, you can attend, no problem. Any student from any branch can attend with me, no problem at all. Okay, good. That's good. Okay, in the last, last meeting we were discussing in meeting number one about converting the analog world, analog world things into the digital world like pictures, video and the audio, right? Sounds. How we can convert that from the analog world to the digital world. For example, you use your camera, you take a picture and you send the picture, right? So when you use your camera and you take a picture, the scenery of which 
you are taking a picture is an analog world because the world we live in the world we live in is an analog world and the computer world is digital world so how the whole picture is converted into the digital form how the sound let's say for example we record the sound when we record the sound the sound is converted into digital form right it is stored in the memory it is converted into digital form so how that is converted we have seen in the last meeting now when converting we see that it takes very large size very large size of memory of memory we have seen that in compression of video audio okay like we discuss one problem in in that we discuss the two hour movie it takes 117 gb 117 gigabits of data a two hour movie so it's very long fine it's very long so we have discussed that like uh, how the memory is consumed how the memory is consumed now we talk about compression techniques compression techniques why we need compression is to reduce the size of the memory file compression of digital files is required to reduce the size of the files to reduce the size of the digital data so digital encoding of sound images videos produce large data files even a 2 hour movie or a video file is it store 117 point something gb gigabytes which is not an yeah, practical or which is not a good thing for any storage device or for any system for example 500 pages of text document created in a plain text format it takes 1.8 megabytes whereas 30 second long video will take 186 megabytes and it 30 second salasin saniya salasin saniya al video hakhud 186 megabytes and if you think of 30 seconds if it is if it is 1 minute how much it will be 300 something and 352 for 1 minute 352 megabytes for 1 minute 1 minute and in 6 30 seconds it says 186 right 30 seconds so if it is 60 seconds 186 divided by multiply by 2 60 seconds will be 372 right 3 second to 2 for 1 minute so 372 for 60 minutes in a 1 hour it will be 22000 megabytes and for 1 hour 2 megabytes sorry 2 gigabytes so it takes very long you know very huge space in the memory so a compression means we use a compression techniques here to compress the file which means taking the original file and converting them into a new file which considerably very small compared to the new file the ratio between the compressed file and the uncompressed file is called compression ratio so how we calculate the compression ratio is the size of uncompressed file that is the original file divided by the size of compressed file we call it as a compression ratio compression ratio the higher the compression ratio is the less storage space would be needed to the resulting compressed file if 10 megabyte file is compressed to 2 megabytes the ratio is 10 is to 2 okay this is 50% we can say 10 is to 2 or 5 is to 1 5 is to 1 not 50% i am sorry is 20% 10 is to 2 okay or which is equal to 5 is to 1 5 is to 1 if the fa same file compressed to 5 megabytes then the ratio is 2 is to 1 that is 10 to is to 5 10 uncompressed file five compressed file which can each is 2 is to 1 okay 
so this is what the compression ratio is so we use compression techniques here to compress the files to reduce the size of the files okay Okay, the next, we have two main types of compression techniques. One is lossless compression, the other is called lossy compression. Lossless compression technique do not lose any significant aspect of the original representation. Whereas lossy compression technique will lose the some parts of the original data in a controlled way or in a controlled manner. Controlled way here it means you don't feel that there is something lost there is something lost fine so uh, compression there are two types of compression lossless compression where no data will be lost while compressing the file lossy compression where some data will be lost but in a controlled manner the opposite to compression is decompression it is a reverse process which uh, where the redundant parts are put back into the representation to restore it in original form or the, in the initial form. Decompression is nothing but reversing the compression. Reversing the compression is called the decompression. Okay. <clears throat> in lossless compression, let's discuss lossless compression. The lossless compression the digital data is stored in a compressed form such that it can be recovered and nothing will be lost. It can be recovered sample for sample and nothing will be lost or altered. So as it is, as the original file, you will recover it as it is. The file will be recovered as it is. For example, a zip file using WinZip or WinRAR is an example of lossless compression i think you use you are you used to this zip files or rare files right whenever we compress with the zip file or the rar file that is lossless compression where you don't lose anything you have the, you will get the original data as it is you don't lose anything fine so how many of you have used this zip files zipping the files or rar win rar or win zip you have used it right okay next time you use it try something like this you zip it and check the compression what is the compressed file and what is the uncompressed file what is the ratio between them okay for example you compress some folder and you see un, uh, the uncompressed version and you check the ratio what is the ratio between them what is the ratio between them we can also test it and it's very easy to test and check the compress and decompress for example here i have this folder let's say this m.esa folder i compress to rar fine now when it compress to rar So it is taking some time. <clears throat> now let me add it to the zip. No, the wrap. Add it to the zip. So I have a zip file here. Okay. What is the total memory of this file is 186 MB. 186 MB. And the zip file is 171 MB. So not much difference. Not much difference. Okay. This difference also depends on uh, the uh, the what are the different type of files you have in that folder. Okay. So there is an uncompression, lo lossless compression. Okay. So in this lossless compression, there is not much. Uh, you don't lose any original parts of the data. A powerful lossless technique is dictionary-based coding. Dictionary-based coding. 
in most digital file some data is repeated what is dictionary based coding is that uh, we see that in most digital file some data is repeated over and over again okay over and over the compression algorithm which is dictionary based simply get rid of this redundancy repeated data scanning for patterns and translating those patterns into something that takes less space for example uh, we'll use this following text to demonstrate the dictionary based coding let's say that this is the text we have when the going gets tough the tough gets going okay now we see that there is some repeated data here there is some repeated data which is the we have the here two times repeated going is repeated tough is repeated okay so repeated data we take we mark it like for example we have this repeated data the going tough and let's say that we mark b as 1 going as 2 tough as 3 and by using this dictionary codes 1 2 3 if we rewrite this sentence again so it will be when let me rewrite this again by using this dictionary codes i'm going to write it is when there is one when one two gets three gets three comma one three get 2 so you say when 1 2 get 3 and so on so where in this text we see that there are total 47 characters and in this text we see that there is only 27 characters so we reduced around 20 characters almost like 50% of the characters has been reduced by so this is how the the lossless compression dictionary based lossless compression works okay another technique for lossless compression is called run length encoding run length encoding in this compression method the runs of similar data items are recognized and replaced with a single instance of the data and replaced with a single instance of a data item together with the number indicating how many times the item is repeated so if there's a for example let's say that we have this 01010101 so if you take like 01010101010101 how many times 01 1 2 3 4 5 so we can write like 7 times 01 instead of writing all this we write just 7 times 01 this is called run length encoding this is called run length encoding also for example if you take this code in this string we have okay 81s 28 zeros then 21s so by uh, by using run length encoding we can simply write 80 of 1 then 28 zero then 20 1 okay again after 21 let's say if i had seven zeros then again we write seven zeros like this right so this is called run length encoding right so this is lossless compression technique so we see two lossless compression techniques one is <coughs> the dictionary based coding the other is the run length encoding run length encoding so lossless coding is used in similar way to the simple images such as line drawing or simple shapes like graphical gif graphic interchange format and used for images on the website so all gif images and the drawing algorithms are drawing images are using this lossless compression technique okay so this is about the lossless compression technique fine is it clear to you lossless compression technique <coughs> so
students online is it clear to you lossless compression technique good the next technique here is lossy compression technique in compression by the name we can understand that we are losing something here while doing compression while doing compression we are losing something here okay <coughs> excuse me <coughs> one minute please I'm sorry. Sorry for our disturbance. Okay. So in lossy compression, as the name, we see that uh, it said it's like we lose some data, but in a controlled manner, in a controlled way, that you don't feel it. That what we lost after decompressing it. Okay. Like for example, what we see the JPEG images, what we see the MP3 files, okay, what we see the video files, these are all compressed, but compressed in such a way that you don't feel that there is something lost, right? For example, you record a sound by using MP3. MP3 is a lossy compression, and you save the format as MP3. But when you play the sound, you don't feel that there is something lost in this sound. You don't feel that. For example, you save some image. You save some image in a JPEG format. In a JPEG format. You save the same image in the GIF format. You find diff two different sizes. But you don't feel that there is something lost in JPEG or there is something more in GIF. So the lossy compression will compress the file in such a way that you don't feel it like there is something lost. So lossy compression, the original file is processed in such a way that the important, it preserves the important information but discard the other information which is less important for a particular application. Lossy compression of audio, video, images, it uses the features of human perception to reduce the amount of data needed to keep with data and to discard which data it uses the human perception features human perceive the data by seeing it as visual or by listening it as audio okay or by touching it okay so in computers either we see the images videos and uh, the photos and all or we listen to the audio right so com the compression technique uses these features of listening human listening and uh, human seeing or vision of the human being to to make the lossy compression to make the lossy compression psycho psychoacoustic is the study of human perceive is do you have any question? So Rahman, do you have any question? Fine. Okay. 
So, psychoacoustic is a study of human perceive and respond to the sound. Like human, how it perceive and respond to the sound. Knowledge from psychoacoustics is used in lossy compression technique to reduce the amount of information in sound signal contains with affecting perceived sound. MP3 audio compression is one of the lossy compression which reduce the compression ratio is 11 is to 1. And if you have 11 MB of data, that will be reduced to 1 MB. If you have 11 MB, will be reduced to 1 MB of the data. <coughs> As described in uh, digital image is made up of small elements called pixels. We have seen what is digital image in our previous meeting. That every image is divided into small pixels. Okay. So, a digital image is nothing but elements, small elements which has got pixels. The more pixels, the higher is the resolution and greater memory it will take. So, in lossy compression, we are trying to reduce the number of pixels here. There are two solutions to reduce the memory. One is to reduce the number of pixels, reduce the pixels required. Another is to compress the data using compression software, some compression software. One of the most in standard photo image coding, that is the loss, loss uh, less coding, is to produce the JPG images. Okay. It is uh, meeting number 7, not 8, chapter 7 or meeting 7. We are still in meeting 7. Okay. We did not start still 8. We will see, we will finish it. If possible, today if we finish it, we will finish it and we will move to 8. Okay. This is our session number 8, but we are still in uh, number 7 discussion. Okay. So this JPEG format, what it does, it removes the, the, the pixels which are not, you know, uh, important for a human being or which is not important for human vision. It is not important for a human vision. Okay. So that's a lossy compression. Now, that's about the compression techniques, lossless and lossy compression. So, in compression, we have two different types, that is lossless and lossy compression. And we have seen in lossless compression two techniques, that is uh, run length coding and dictionary based coding. Okay. And in loss, lossy compression, we have seen like the uh, JPEG format and JPEG format, how the lossy compression works. Okay. For the sound and the images. That's about the compression. The next thing here we have is number systems. Number system. In computers, we have different number systems. Till now, what we have the numbers, that is from 0 to 9, right? The numbers we have is from 0 to 9. But in computers, we have different number systems. In computers, we have different number systems. We have 0 to 9, but this 0 to 9 is called what base 10 numbers or decimal numbers. Okay, that what we are using the numbers from 0 to 9 that makes other numbers, like for example, 10. 10 is 0 and 1 will make 10. 11, 100, 200, 300, like this. <coughs> Other than this, in computers, we also have the binary numbers, which is called base 2 or 0 and 1. That takes only 0 and 1. Only 0 and 1. There is no 2 here. <coughs> there is no 2, there is no 3. Fine. That is called binary numbers. We also have octal numbers that is from 0 to 7. Octal means 8. 8 numbers, 0 to 7. It is 8 numbers. So, octal has 0 to 7. 
numbers there is no 8 and 9 there is no 8 and 9 we also have hexadecimal number that is from 0 to 9 and then from a to f now what is a to f a is it is like a b c d e f okay a is 10 b 11 c 12 d 13 e 14 f 15 so 0 to 15 that is 16 numbers so it is hexadecimal number but we don't write 10 11 12 we write 0 to 9 and a to f a to f now if i ask you this if i ask you this 1001 to the base 2 what is this number binary or decimal or hexadecimal it is binary number how do we find the binary number first thing we look into the base it is 2 this says that it is a binary okay fine and also we look into the inside there is no 2 there is only zeros and ones there is no okay there is no 2 here 2 3 4 there is only zeros and ones if someone write like this like 1 2 0 1 to the base 2 is it a binary number no this is wrong we cannot write like 1 2 0 2 to the base 2 why because the binary does not take 2 the binary does not take 2 here okay now if I ask you like for example 1001 what is this number whether it, it is, is it a binary or decimal or octal or hexadecimal decimal binary okay binary can it be an octal number can it be a decimal number can it be a hexadecimal number right see it can be any number why because it is 1001 it does not mention what type of number it is whether it is binary or what binary it means base 2 or it says like the given number is binary number or it gives like base 2 then it is a binary number and if it is not mentioned binary we can read it like 1001 as octal or decimal or hexadecimal it can be any number fine so you need to take care that whether it is given the base or it is written in the question like given binary number so it is binary number given octal number if i say like 1001 to the base 8 it is an octal number right if i say 1001 to the base 10 this is decimal number and if I say 1001 to the base 16, this is hexadecimal number. Fine. So we need to look into the number, the base to decide which number it is under which base. We need to look into the number and the base to decide which base and which number it is. Fine. So base 10 numbers is the uh, decimal numbers that takes digits from 0 to 9 okay and it is group of tens it is counted as group of tens group of multiples of tens 13 into 10 power 1 and a powers of 10 so 3 into 10 power of 0 is 3 plus 7 into 10 power 0 is uh, sorry it is not time 7 into 10 power 0 
It's a mistake here. 37, right? 3 into 10 power 1 plus 7 into 10 power 0. 10 power 0, 10 power 1 from the right hand side. Okay. 7 into 10 power 0 is 7 plus 3 into 10 is 30, which is 37. Right. So any number in decimal can be write as multiples of 10. Multiples of 10 as given here. 345, 5 into 10 power 0, 4 into 10 power 1 and 3 into 10 power 2. So it is 345. Total 345. Fine. Octal numbers are base 8 numbers. We can convert the octal numbers into decimal numbers just by multiplying the powers of 8. Now, octal numbers are base 8 numbers and we can convert the octal number to decimal number. Let's say for example I have 2, 4, 5, base 8 and it is asked you what is decimal of this. You need to just multiply the powers of 8. Powers of 8. How? 2 multiply by 8 plus 4 multiply by 8 plus 5 multiply by 8. Now you add powers here. 8 power 0, 8 power 1, 8 power 2. Okay. Now you tell me what is the answer. 5 into 8 power 0 is? 8 power 0 is how much? What is 8 power 0? Eight power zero is one. Anything to the power of zero is one. Anything to the power of zero is one. One into five is five. Plus eight power one is eight. Eight into four, how much? Thirty-two. Plus eight square is sixty-four. Sixty-four into two, how much? Sixty-four into two. 128. So you add 128 plus 32 plus 5. How much? 165. So the decimal for this octal is 165. Decimal for this octal is 165. You got the how to convert the decimal to octal? Sorry, octal to decimal. Is it clear to you? How to convert octal to decimal? Okay. <coughs> this is by multiplying the powers of 8. Now similarly, binary numbers can also be converted into decimal. Again by multiplying the powers of 2. Multiplying by the powers of 2. Because binary is 2. So multiplying the powers of 2 will give you the decimal value. Okay. So if I have a binary number 10101 to the base 2, what is the decimal of this? How to find? You write 1 into 2 plus 0 into 2 plus 1 into 2 plus 0 into 2 plus 1 multiplied by 2. Now you add powers here. 2 power 0, 2 power 1, 2 power 2, 2 power 3, 2 power 4. Now you multiply and go on adding. 2 in 1 into 2 power 0 is how much? 1 plus 0 into anything? 0 plus 1 into 2 power 2 is 4 because 2 power 2, 4, 4 into 1, 4. 0 into anything is 0 plus 1 into 2 power 4 is Two power four is sixteen. So we got this sixteen plus zero plus four plus one. How much total? Twenty one. So twenty one is the decimal for this binary. You got how to convert the binary to decimal? 
multiply the powers of 2 multiply the powers of 2 Have more conversions. Yeah, binary to decimal. I explained much by multiplying the powers of two. octal to decimal. I explained multiplying and adding powers of eight. Now converting decimal to binary. If you want to convert decimal to binary, we just to calculate the number one zero one zero one to the binary. How much is the decimal we calculated? Just now we calculate the binary of decimal of this right. How much? 21. Okay. Now let us check how we convert 21 decimal to binary to base 2. If it is asked in the question, convert the following decimal number into binary. So how we convert? Here what we did? We multiply by the powers of 2, right? 2 power 0, 2 power 1, 2 power 2, we multiply by the powers of 2. Now, in this case, converting decimal to binary, we are going to divide, divide by 2, very good. Mariam says divide by 2, very good. Divide by 2, it goes how many times? 10 times 20, remaining 1. Remaining 1. Divide this by 2, again. 5 times 10 remaining 0 and the taqseem be 5 10 ala 2 5 5 marwad baqi 0 divide by 2 2 times 2 2 4 remaining 1 divide by 2 1 time remaining 0 again divide by 2 0 time remaining 1 so once you get 0 here you stop here okay and you take the numbers from down to up, from here down to up, which is 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 to the base 2. So this is 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 binary. Clear? Now, Give me the binary for 24. In decimal, what is the binary? 24 decimal, what is the binary? So you calculate and tell me, you calculate and tell me what is the binary of this decimal number 24 of 10. What is the binary of this decimal number? 1, 1. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. Can some, someone confirm this? Amani Ahmed says 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. Yumna, is it correct? Muhanna, Muhanna al Mu'min min Ahsa, is it right? You get the same number? Sultan says no. Still. So what is then what is the correct number Sultan? Twenty four divided by two, twelve times remaining zero divided by two. 6 times remaining 0 divided by 2, 3 times remaining 0 divided by 2, 
One time remaining, one divide by two, zero time remaining one. So it is one one zero zero zero. That's correct, Sultan. So it is right. One one zero 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 one. Now convert this one one zero 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 into decimal. One one zero 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 of binary to decimal. How do you convert? One multiply by two plus one multiply by two plus zero by two plus zero by two plus zero by two. Three zeros we have. Now add forward. Zero one two three four. So it is zero plus this is zero plus this is zero plus this is eight plus this is sixteen. Sixteen plus eight is twenty-four. So it is twenty-four. So you got an idea about how to convert the numbers from binary to decimal and decimal to binary. Okay. Similarly, we can also convert a decimal number into octal. Similarly, we can also convert a decimal number into octal. Like we convert a octal to decimal. For example, if I have two forty-five octal number, what is the decimal? What is the decimal? It is one sixty-five. I think, right? It is like two into eight plus four into eight plus five into eight. Eight power zero, eight power one, eight power two. So this is five plus thirty-two plus one twenty-eight, right? Which is one sixty-five. One sixty-five, right? <clears throat> one sixty-five, right? Aditi M Y H Dash. Okay. Now, how we can convert the same 165 back to octal? 165 in decimal. What is the octal of it? Fine. What is the octal of it? Divide by eight. 165 divided by eight. How many times it will go? How many times this will go? 165 divided by 8, and what is the remaining? 20 times 160, remaining 5. And Ashreen, uh, Samania, Mio, Sitin, Bhavi, Kamsa. Right? Divide by 8 again. How many times it will go? How many times it will go? Divide by 8. Two times sixteen, remaining four. Divide by eight zero times, remaining two. So if you take from down to up, it is two four five in octal. Two four five in octal. So you're gonna divide it. Fine. So <coughs> this is the conversions between octal to decimal, decimal to octal, and then. Binary to decimal and decimal to binary. You will get one question, inshallah, in the midterm. Oh, sorry, in the exam, in the uh, in the final exam, uh, that is a conversion from binary to decimal or decimal to binary. So that's about the number systems. Uh, we have four different types of number systems: decimal, octal, binary, and hexadecimal. And we have seen the conversions from binary to decimal, octal to decimal. And then decimal to binary, and then octal to uh, sorry decimal to octal by dividing. Similarly, hexadecimal. If you want to convert hexadecimal to decimal, multiply by powers of sixteen, sixteen power zero, sixteen power one, and on. And if you want to convert decimal to hexadecimal, divide by sixteen. Okay. 
The next topic here is human computer interaction. Human computer interaction, HCI. HCI is a study of human computer interaction. <clears throat> this is a study of human interact with the computers and their application, like how the human beings interact with the computers. Okay, this is called human computer interaction. Uh, it looks at the design of computer system in which human and computer need to work together and tell us how to build the interface that are safe, efficient, easy and enjoyable to use and easy to use as well as functional. It works also. It is a broad subject covering all aspects of the way in which people interact with the computer. So it draws on ideas from many subjects including computer science, psychology, engineering, AI, uh, graphic designs and all. <coughs> the, important, the importance of good user interface because human computer interaction depends on the user interface design, how the design for the system is. So a, a good user interface is the one that is easy to use and easy to understand easy to use and easy to understand is the one that meets the need of the intended users why i am using the system i should get that and that one support the user in the task they wish to undertake fine then we call it as a good user interface any program any application you download a new application in your mobile phone or you install any new program in your computer, the interface of that program should be good. It means that it should be easy to use, easy to understand and what, why you want this, that should be met, should meet the user requirements, it should support the users in to do the task. Okay, In doing the task, it should support the users. A good user interface thinks about the user of user interface and pays great attention to the usability for the users. A cardinal rule is that for a good user interface is always be aware of user needs, what the user want. If I am doing some application program for the university, so you should remember always that what the university want, how they want, then only you can draw a good user interface for the university. Okay, so that the university people can use it very easily and happily. The user interface design principles, there are several principles in designing the user interface. Uh, some of these principles or you can say the best known principles are visibility of the user interface, feedback, affordance, simplicity, structure, consistency and tolerance you will get in the exam you may get in the exam this question what are the principles or list four or five or three or two principles of good user interface or user interface design principles list five user interface design principles so you need to write visibility feedback affordance Simplicity, tolerance, consistency, structure. Fine. So now we will explain one by one. Number one, visibility. Visibility in the context of UI means making it clear what the element is used for. The visibility of the element. Making it clear what the element is used for. For example, what is this button? Yes, what is this button? This is a play button, right? So whenever we want something to play inside our application program or inside the software that we install in our mobile or in computer, 
something to play, something to run, okay, then we use this kind of button. This gives the more visibility to the user that if some the user want to play something, you can just go and click this button. No need to you know, find which is the play button or no need to look into the documents where is the play button okay by looking into this button it is understood that this is a play button and if you want to play something just click on this okay similarly what is this button yeah what is this button print button so print here it means it can be print a document okay it can be print a document so if you are printing something click on this button directly you know that when i click this button it is to print the document or a picture or whatever okay so so the visibility here it means that making it clear what the element is used for why the, this element is particularly used for to play or to cancel or to click or to forward or to pause fine for what purpose the element is used for the ui element should have a good visibility always the element should have a good visibility this can be done by the labeling text or images like put something like this as image or by writing some text on it okay for example a dvd player shows these buttons these are the images okay and for example uh, a print document shows a print message which is text so that's the visibility number two feedback feedback in the context of ui user interface means making it clear what action has been achieved through this element once you do something, it should give you some feedback that, okay, what is done? For example, if I click this button, the video or audio or whatever, for what I click, that should be played, right? I, I can see some difference. I can see some action there. That is the feedback. What you get an action after clicking on the button, after clicking on the element of the user interface, that is your feedback. Okay. So feedback is to say that one part of action has finished and you can begin with another part. Feedback can be visual, audible or tactile. Visual feedback, it means you can see the feedback like you click the play button and then you see that something is played. So that's a feedback to you. Audible, it means you get some sound. You get some sound. That's a feedback. If someone is calling you, on your mobile phone your mobile will ring will get will generate some sound or will play some sound that's a feedback like someone is calling to you or it can be tactile tactile it means you can feel it like for example your mobile vibrates or when you are playing with the games you are playing the games with the joystick the joystick vibrates the mouse vibrates okay so that's a feedback fine so feedback must tell the user that something has been done, something has been finished and you can start with something new. Okay, that's a feedback. The next is affordance. Affordance in the context of UI means making it clear the UI element should be used. How the element should be used. So in a simple way, it means giving a clue to use this element to use this button or to use this uh, image how to use it how to use the element <coughs> that's uh, the affordance okay, giving the clue that's the uh, affordance fine so that's uh, visibility feedback and affordance is it clear three things to you is it clear Visibility, feedback, and affordance. Because you will get, you may get this question in the exam. Because most of the time, I see these questions is being asked about the feedback, affordance, and simplicity. Okay.
No, this is TM triple one. This is TM triple one. This course is TM triple one, not TM Yohdash. This is T TM Yohdash. TM Yohdash can end up in the end of the harpa. خلاص نتيم يا سلاطة خلينا نتيم مخداش. طيب the next principle of good user interface is simplicity. Simplicity means keeping things as simple as possible. Keeping things as simple as possible. To achieve simplicity, employ action icons and words to the user interface to be kept in a natural language or in a natural form for the user. Okay, make it more simple. Like for example, we see that some websites are uh, giving different languages. You can use the website in Arabic, in English, or in French, right? So making things are simple for the users. Making things simple for the users. And whenever they want, uh, they you want uh, they want us to visit their websites. Uh, they the user must not feel something hard in to use that application or website or program so things should be kept more simple as possible fine to achieve this you can uh, you know to achieve simplicity you can employ some actions icon words and user interface controls that are natural to the users like for example this is a play button so wherever there is any play in the application you use this button directly because it is natural it's, everyone knows that this is a play button right instead of for the play this button if i keep a button like this okay no one will understand what is this button fine so that is not simplicity keeping the things which are more natural more easy to understand and more easy for the users to use that's the simplicity okay for example using simple languages uh break the complex task into simple task and a simpler sub task fine find out what is most common and use the short forms okay so that's called the simplicity the next is tolerance tolerance it means uh, it's the ability of a user interface to prevent errors if possible and make sure make them easy to recover from it okay so tolerance it means system should be some tolerable if i make some mistake system will accept that mistake and say that you are not doing right this is wrong you have to do like this this is what the tolerance is and if someone is doing mistake in the program or in using the program using the application using the website the system will tell that okay this is not the correct data like for example sometimes we see that when we fill some forms online if we miss something the system will tell us you missed this part you go back and fill that in this is tolerance the system will take your things and ask you to correct it okay or recover uh, allow a solution to recover <coughs> that is the tolerance The next part is structure. Structure is the user interface need to be structured in a way that is meaningful and useful to the user. Like for example, you can see the structures, you know, here the structures for the word file on the top of the word file. Fine. So we know the file menu, we know the home menu, we know the insert menu. The meaningful and useful way it is structured. Okay, consistency. It means it appears in a consistent form in all applications. For example, if you open the Microsoft application, Microsoft Office, you see this: how the menus are listed: File, Home, Insert, Design, Transition, and all. This is from Microsoft Office, Microsoft PowerPoint. If I open from Microsoft Office, Microsoft Word. i find the same thing file home insert page down and in a similar way in a similar way similar place okay this is called consistency so we need to keep the things more consistent as consistent as 
possible fine as consistent as possible fine so this is the consistency so these are all the seven you know the principles of the user interface these are very important principles uh, as i told uh, you have the visibility feedback affordance simplicity structure consistency and tolerance and tolerance okay so in exam any two three four or list them can be asked in the exam for you and it can be in the in the final exam okay so this is all about what we have in the meeting number 7 fine so before we close uh, meeting number 8 it starts with the network technologies and since uh, we just left with half an hour okay we will keep this meeting number 8 inshallah for our next meeting for now if you have any questions any questions if you have 